Hey there, YouTube. How you doing? It is January 27th. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time. Uh, I wanted to chat with you guys in another video log and let you know where the Retro Unscripted project is and where it's going uh, over the coming week or two. I also wanted to share with you some things that I've picked up recently, that uh, some additions to my, uh, to my game library, uh, and a couple of other things that I wanted to touch on. Uh, I like doing these video logs every once in a while just out of, uh, out of format, uh, just to kind of share with you uh, person to person, um, basically just where we are and to kind of catch up. Um, first of all, thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the YouTube channel uh, and to those of you who have watched the videos, whether you're subscribers or not. Um, well, 50 plus subscribers and 400 plus views over three weeks um, may not be viewed as record breaking or or big or significant or anything like that. Um, it certainly means a great deal to myself. Um, as I've said time and again, uh, this project was something that really was spontaneous more than anything. Um, you know, I had talked about it but never really put any planning into it. Uh, and when I decided to jump in, uh, I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants. Um, the video format that I've used uh, with uh, just me on camera with no editing and no script, uh, I didn't know how that was going to fly. And I've just been floored with the positive reaction that I've received. Uh, people are telling me that they like what they see and they're interested in the things that I've talked about. Uh, and that's all I could ever ask for. Even if five people said, wow, you know what? This stuff's pretty cool. You should keep doing it. That would be enough for me to keep doing this. But the fact that 10 times that uh, in just three weeks' time have said the same things or similar things, um, I can't tell you uh, how much of a boost that is to my morale and how much fuel it is for me to continue with the project um, as much as I have, uh, even with school ramping up, which I'm sure it will be soon. Um, this is a very important project to me. This is an important part of my life and important enough where I'm thinking once I get myself a little bit of money, I might want to get some business cards made and, um, you know, make it a brand. Uh, that would be pretty neat. My, uh, my legacy on the internet, as it were, um, I'm hoping that's what happens. So again, thank you very much to everybody who, uh, who has subscribed, who has watched, uh, who's read the blog, who follows me on Twitter, all of that. Uh, it, it means a great deal. Thank you. Um, the next thing, um, I know I don't have any games playing behind me on the GX TV, uh, so if you guys haven't seen what one looks like closed, the speakers actually fold in like that, uh, and when they open up, that's when you see like the 13 inch screen. Uh, so it's a really nice TV and it certainly helps to keep the dust off the screen. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Um, let me share with you some things that I picked up recently, uh, for my library. Uh, and there's a lot here, so I'm not going to go too, too much into detail because I'm sure you don't want another 20-minute uh, video staring you in the face. Um, first is uh, the final round, which is this right here. It's an early Konami golf game for the PlayStation from 1996. Uh, I played this briefly last night, uh, and I have a lot to learn. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little more arcadey kind of like uh, how in the zone was which is another early uh, konami sports title for the playstation and it's uh the controls just aren't that intuitive and obviously the graphics at that point in the uh the playstation lifespan aren't going to be that impressive so uh the final round i got this for five dollars at the flea market this past weekend uh next up and don't laugh please don't laugh uh i have cyber tiger here Yes, and Tiger's caricature is supposed to look like that. Uh, this um, isn't all kinds of simulation like the Tiger Woods PGA Tour games were for the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, so on and so forth. Um, this is more aimed toward youths, uh, and you could actually play as Tiger as a kid and then as a teen and growing up. Uh, and they're like cyber versions of the golf courses. Uh, you can collect powered up golf balls to uh, kind of help cheat your way through certain games. Um, 
the game is not great, to be honest. Uh, the reason that uh, that Cyber Tiger here uh, stuck out to me was primarily because uh, I played this a lot as a demo when I was working for Funko Land in uh, in Springfield as a manager. We had it running on a GX TV, very similar to that, uh, to let people try. And I would play when the store was quiet. And I just remember spending a bunch of time with it. It wasn't a great game, but it just uh, the memories that it brings back when I saw it at the flea market, I had to have it. This was $5 and in perfect condition. Uh, next up, I got this um, just before school started. Uh, and I got this at a uh, consignment store. Uh, this is PGA Tour 97 here. Uh, that looks like Peter Jacobson on the cover. Um, this game really isn't very good either. Um, I think there are only two courses on this disc. <laughs> uh, I really can't say why I got it except for the fact that it was $4 and it was complete and the disc was in great shape. So that's all I have to say about it. Uh, so another golf game. Uh, it's like I have a, like I have a golf problem. Uh, the next one is uh, NBA Live 99, and I believe that's uh, Antoine Walker on the cover. Um, again, it was $4. The disc is in immaculate condition. Uh, it's complete, and that's why I got it. Uh, as I'm sure you know by now, um, I'm a big fan of sports video games, so I collect as many as I can and add them to my library, and this is just another example. Uh, the next one is uh, Madden 97 for the PlayStation. I don't, unfortunately, have the CD booklet slash manual, which is disappointing. Um, this particular game stands out to me because I played it a lot when it first came out. I uh, bought it brand new. I uh, had friends over to play it uh, and just had good memories. Uh, the other neat thing is seeing John Madden and Pat Summerall uh, doing full motion video scenes before each game. Uh, it's always good to see Pat Summerall, uh, especially after his passing, because um, I think that he was one of the better announcers in the game, and it was tough to lose him. So uh, that's Madden 97. Uh, this was like a couple of dollars. Um, Asteroids for the PlayStation right here. Again, this is uh, in mint condition and complete. Uh, if you haven't played Asteroids for the PlayStation, it's a bit different from the arcade game. Um, you can collect power-ups in this, and there are other unlockables. Um, it's actually a pretty addictive game, although it's very simple uh, in the way that it's executed. If you find it uh, for a couple of dollars out and about, I, I do recommend it, actually. Uh, the next one is Pac-Man World. And that's uh, also five dollars that I paid for that. Unfortunately, the CD case, uh, the one of the hinges is missing, uh, but the disc is in good shape and the game is just great. Uh, if you haven't played the Pac-Man World games, uh, they're platformers uh, with maze options built in, so you get to still eat dots and eat ghosts and such. Um, but this was the game that started it all, and it's actually really good. It's a uh, uh, an underrated gem, if you were so, uh, if you will. So, if you do find it while you're out and about, this is one I definitely do recommend adding. Uh, I know I got a good deal on this, so five dollars is what I found it for. I don't have it here on camera in front of me, but I did also pick up a Super Bowling for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, that's another one that I got based on nostalgia alone. Uh, when that came out back in 1992, I rented it for a weekend from Blockbuster. And myself, uh, the girl I was dating, and her brother, the three of us, played it almost all weekend. We were on a bowling league, so having a bowling game at that time kind of brought us even closer together. Uh, it was goofy. Um, the, the turkey in the title screen and then the weird announcer that looks like a cross between the bald eagle from the Muppet Show and Gumby um, really didn't make any sense, but still, it was the goofiness of the game, but the fact that it was still a bowling game, and there were um, some basic bowling concepts like hook or curve and speed and lining up properly on the lane, so we played it a lot. I never bought it. Uh, I found it for $5 uh, at the flea market this weekend, had to have it. Uh, next up, 
And these are PlayStation 2 games now. Big surprise, I got more of these, right? Uh, this is Mercenaries here. Uh, I had originally bought Mercenaries just after Christmas, and the disc didn't work. Uh, this one does. Uh, this is a sandbox game from uh, Pan Pandemic Studios. Um, neat stuff. I had never played it before. I spent about a half an hour with it uh, over the weekend, and it's bombastic, as you'd expect. Um, great sound, great music. Um Kind of neat with vehicles or the cross or the uh, the mix between vehicle combat and on foot combat uh, is pretty neat. Uh, I'm not the biggest sandbox guy, but I do like that, so I'll look forward to spending more time with that at some point. Uh, next, and I only paid four dollars for this. Uh, this is uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories for the PS2 or RE Chain of Memories, regarding Chain of Memories or however you say it. Um, I got it because it's complete and because the disc was basically never played. Uh, I'm not a fan of this particular game in the Kingdom Hearts series because the, the card-based combat just confuses the heck out of me. I don't understand it. Uh, I tried to play it some more this weekend just to hear the voice work and see what the PlayStation 2 treatment looked like over and above the original Game Boy Advance game, and it's still as confusing as it was to me, so... Uh, it's nice to have for my library. I don't know when or if I'll ever come back to playing it, but I got it for four dollars is a good deal. Um, the next one I wanted to show you is Destroy All Humans, which is the greatest hits version. Another pandemic game. This one from THQ. Um, this is a lot of fun to play, and it's because of the writing, because of the voice work, um, being an alien and just being aggressive. Um, reading humans thoughts and just vaporizing buildings and everything it's it's the the opposite destruction fantasy that you always wanted um you know if you've ever seen war of the worlds and you actually rooted for the aliens instead of the humans um then this is the game for you to play if you haven't played it before um i actually want to find the sequel i know that people didn't like that one as much as this but i'd still like to have it just to have both of them i did hear that the third game in the series was terrible though and i won't touch that uh, and then the last one that I wanted to show off, and unfortunately there's a big sticker over the title, so I'll just tell you, it's uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. You can see Spider-Man there on the cover. Um, I played this on the Xbox 360, and it felt like an early 360 game. Uh, frame rate issues, and um, just it, it it felt like a somewhat cleaner version of what you would have played a generation before. And unfortunately, at least in my point of view, from my eyes, um, it doesn't run that much better on the PS2 either. I don't, you really can't tell what the lead development platform was for it. Um, to me, it doesn't run as well or execute as well as the X-Men Legends games do. And it's certainly not as high on my list as far as action RPGs go that Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance or Champions of Norath are. Um, but still, I got a good deal on this too. This was like a dollar eighty, and it's despite the sticker on the front, uh, it's complete. The disc is in great shape, so I figured I would jump at it. The PS2 games, by the way, uh, more GameStop pickups. Uh, if you still haven't hit your local GameStop or haven't thought about PS2 games that you might want to add to your libraries, um, it's something you definitely want to think about because eventually the games are going to be either bought. Or they're going to be transferred to stores that might be too far away from where you live. So feel free to call. Look up their inventory on uh, GameStop.com. Remember that uh, depending on the store, they're supposed to be able to uh, ship games to any location. So if you can call your home store and have them RSB or ship games in, you can certainly do that. But um, if you're interested in either building or starting a PlayStation 2 library, um, it's something that it's not a important thing, but it's something you're going to want to start to think about soon because with the 75% off deal, a lot of folks like myself are starting to just snap up whatever they can find. So uh, those are the recent additions to my library. I don't have uh, full numbers. Again, I haven't updated my counts as to uh, how many games I have. I have to do that. That's something I'll probably do for the first week of February. Uh, that's what I'm thinking to be able to kind of have an idea where I'm at as far as numbers go. Um, as far as episodes this week, I'm still shooting for uh, Tuesday and Thursday. 
um, or possibly Tuesday and Friday would probably be better. Um, I seem to have a pretty decent amount of energy after Tuesday classes, um, so it feels pretty good to be able to just come home, set up the laptop here in Retro Central, uh, figure out what I'm going to talk about, and just go. Uh, Thursdays are a little bit tougher. Um, I know that this past Thursday I just didn't have the energy or the drive initially. I was able to get it done, but uh, I just I didn't have it. So I'm thinking either uh, Tuesday and then either Thursday or Friday of this week. Uh, I don't have uh, topics just yet. Um, I was talking to family at my mom's 60th birthday party this weekend uh, about the series and was asked, uh, you know, so what are you going to talk about on your next episode? And I, I told them exactly what I'm telling you now. I, I don't know. Uh, these things literally come to me as I'm here in the bedroom, as I'm here in Retro Central kind of looking around. I'll see a game or I'll see something that kind of evokes a memory and then I just roll with it. Uh, not the most professional thing. Uh, it's very similar to the way that I write. I don't do first drafts or anything, which is probably why English composition is going to be terrible for me this semester. Um, but, you know, I just kind of sit and go. But I do, uh, I, I can promise you that unless my health gives out for whatever reason this week, I've been fighting a little bit of a cold. Um, Tuesday and then either Thursday or Friday, I'll get a couple of episodes up and kind of keep the content coming because you guys seem to like it, and that's great. Um, last but not least, uh, I uh, I know it's been a very difficult uh, it's been a very difficult weekend for um, a lot of us in the gaming community, uh, especially those of us in smaller communities, the retro community, retroware. Uh, Channel Awesome slash that guy with the glasses. Um, losing uh, Justin Juario over uh, hearing about what happened over the weekend was um, uh, very difficult to say the least. Um, while I didn't know Justin, I never met him. I'm certainly familiar with his work. I've seen his videos and I know firsthand uh, the... Um, the influence and the effect that Justin had on other video creators um, and on the community at large, uh, on you know, on the import community. Um, I mean, so many people uh, Justin touched. So when the news came down, it was it was shocking, it was jarring. Um, for some people, it was anger-inducing. For others, it was um, uh, it, it was very, very difficult to take and still is um, now some 48 hours or so after we've been familiar with what happened. Um, I did write some things that were running around in my head after trying to process it. Uh, I did put it up on the blog and uh, I'll leave a link below if you guys want to look at it. Um, I know that so many other members of the community that knew Justin or were influenced by, inspired by, or touched by Justin have also posted their thoughts and, and their content. Uh, and while it may not be my place to do so, um, I do thank each and every one of you uh, that have shared videos, that have shared words, that have shared feelings. Um, I think that that is so important as far as us trying to come to grips with, um, with what's happened. Um, not even talking about the, the, the healing process, but just the mourning the process, getting all of that out in the open and sharing. Something that I firmly believe, I have always believed, uh, and it's something that, that Justin echoed in a video that a lot of people have shared this weekend, is um, the importance of every single person in the community. Um, it really doesn't matter uh, whether you write, whether you shoot videos, how many views, how many subscribers, um, how many fans, none of that uh, matters because each one of us, in my personal opinion, plays a very vital role in keeping the community going. If it wasn't for all of you who like to read what people write, like to watch what people shoot and put together and edit. Um, if it weren't for you, then 
certainly not me, and I tend to think that a lot of other people who create content wouldn't do what they do. Um, they do it for you. I know that for some there may be money involved, but I, I will tell you firsthand, they do it for you guys, uh, for those of you that watch, for those of you that read. Um, and I'm one of those people. Uh, I've been watching videos and reading people's writing for years uh, and have been entertained by them. And if it wasn't for what they do, I wouldn't be doing the same. So um, you're certainly very important, not just as a viewer or a reader, but as a part of the community, a part of what makes us go. Um, your thoughts, your views, your opinions, your experiences, your memories, all of that um, is fuel for what drives all of us. Um, if I don't know about your experiences, I don't learn anything. Um, if you learn something from what I've shared, um, certain perspectives on certain games or certain memories from arcades that I've shared or anything like that, then I know that I've done a good thing. Um, because I've given something back to the community that wasn't there before. And all of you do that. Even if you leave one comment on one video somewhere, you've added something that wasn't there to begin with uh, and made your mark as a member of this community. You belong. You're important, as, uh, as what has been said. So I hope that you remember that. Um, I believe it. Justin believed it. I know that so many others believe that too, which is why we've all rallied around each other this weekend and will continue to do so uh, because we are a community. Um, we stand strong. We support each other in the best of times and the worst of times, and we will continue to do that. So I hope that you will keep that in mind uh, through this, uh, this really difficult time. Um, it's hard for me to, to wrap my head around it. I know that other members of the community have, have said the same um, and know that that's okay. Um, yeah, that's certainly okay. Answers are really tough to come by. So that's it. Uh, sorry I ran long. Um, I think you're going to wind up seeing that. I'll try and cut down time on uh, actual episodes from here on out, but... Um, that's what's on my mind. That's what's happening with the project. Again, thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next Retro Unscripted. Have a great week, everybody.